Hi guys, this is Cheryl Willis over at the Real Agent Now Group right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And you may be thinking, what's the difference about Scottsdale and Phoenix? For all you know, you probably haven't even heard about all the secret little spots in Phoenix, Arizona. And maybe they might be a better fit for you. If you're thinking about moving to the Scottsdale area and you don't really know much about the other areas in the greater Phoenix area, you're not gonna wanna miss this video where we cover the difference between Scottsdale and Phoenix, right neighboring cities, but what it's like to live, work, play, eat, dine, entertain. What is the difference? This is the video you don't wanna miss as I show you around and all the little hot spots in both Scottsdale and Phoenix, Arizona. Hi guys, it's Cheryl Willis over at The Real Agent Now Group right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And if this is the first time to our channel, you're gonna wanna hit that little subscribe button and click that little tiny bell there so that you are notified each and every time we release a new video. We are getting calls every single day and we love it. If you're even thinking about moving to Arizona, the greater Phoenix area, then pick up that phone, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, days, nights, weekends. We are here when you need us, we got your back when moving to the greater Phoenix area. Okay, so you've made the decision, or maybe you haven't, but you're thinking about moving to Arizona and all you've heard about is Scottsdale. Like, why wouldn't you? Scottsdale is the Miami Beach of Arizona. It is where all the fun is to be had. It's where all the amazing shopping is. It's where all the dining, entertainment, and when we have Super Bowl and big events, they tend to always be in Scottsdale. But what about Phoenix? Is there anywhere in Phoenix that might be just as nice as Scottsdale? But let me tell you, Phoenix is ginormous, equally as large as Scottsdale, 40 miles from the furthest north point to the furthest south point. How do you make heads or tails? Well, let me tell you, I'm gonna walk you through. Scottsdale is truly a magical place. It has so many different parts of Scottsdale, but it's not all that Arizona has to offer. So one of the things that we really like to do when we have guests come into town and before they even start shopping, we love to send them out on self-guided tours, especially right now with the recovery from COVID, we are definitely taking a safe approach and our guests love it. They come to town, they tell us a little bit more about their lifestyle, what they're hoping for to find in their new place they call home. And I'm not just talking about the four walls. They wanna know what Arizona is all about. And so we send them to different parts of town that match their criteria. And it's amazing how many people they start with Scottsdale until they saw Scottsdale. No doubt Scottsdale is going to be one of the funnest, <laughs> most exciting nightclub scene. But that's not all Scottsdale is. So let's break it down a little. All right, so if we go the furthest south, which by the way, when I moved here, it was the only part of Scottsdale. It was Old Town. And Old Town still exists today, but it has become quite the destination for tourism. As we recover for co from COVID, we are finding more and more visitors here to the greater Phoenix area. We've almost resumed normal. In fact, we've opened our state already. So come on out and let's show you around. But Old Town is going to be where you find definitely the best shopping, the best entertainment, the biggest, loudest, boom, boom, nightlife <laughs> you can imagine. So if you are looking for that vacation and the resorty kind of feel, I would definitely high, highly recommend the Old Town area. Now, if you're gonna live there, let's break this down. So buying in the downtown Old Town Scottsdale area is a little bit different than you probably were expecting. For the most part, you're talking high density luxury condominiums. In fact, there is an area of town that's actually called the waterfront 
and even our penthouse goes all the way up to three, four, and five million dollars. So this is very high density, again, high end luxury living. If this is important to you, if you are looking for condominiums in the downtown area, you don't have to go all the way to the top, but you are going to be making that investment of at least about $500,000. And that's going to not include the HOA. So depending on the community you select um, that fits your lifestyle in the downtown old town part of Scottsdale, you're going to be looking at a minimum of a $500,000 investment for the property itself. And HOAs can be as high as six or $700 a month. In some cases, you get a lot of amenities, almost like a concierge service, but it really depends on what fits your lifestyle and what you're looking for. And let me tell you, we know exactly where to send you based on what your needs and preference, preferences might be. Now, just outside of, of Scottsdale, in the Old Town area, there is some absolutely beautiful, if you ask me, charming, uh, little quaint, almost bungalow type single family homes. These are homes that were built in the 1950s, 1960s, and they have been excellently cared for. Most of these are starting off with either a two bedroom, one bath, maybe a two bedroom, two bath carport. But as they've um, changed hands and new buyers come into town, when these properties come up on the market, they are making a complete transition. They're adding on, usually out back or a little bit wider. They're enclosing that carport. Um, but again, these areas don't have HOAs, so there's a lot of things that you can do as long as the city approves it. Remember, what you start with isn't necessarily what you finish with, either on buying a home that's not moving ready, maybe it needs your loving touch, or if you are possibly looking at um, a smaller home first just to get familiar in Arizona and then moving up to an area after you get to know the area a little bit more. Now, as we go through Scottsdale, you are going to find some of the most amazing places, but they're all not what everyone thinks. Let's take a little tour. So first, one of my favorite areas is, so just north of the Old Town area, you're gonna find charming McCormick Ranch. Now McCormick Ranch is actually one of my favorite areas. Most of these homes were built in the 70s and 80s. So you're gonna find individual builders and as again, people have come in and retrofitted or you know remodeled and updated, there is some very, very unique properties here. We have some of the Frank Lloyd Wright influence and some of the really unique architecture um, that again was prevalent in that era. So you're gonna see a lot of homes in the front, they might look like they're old, but on the inside of these homes, oh my goodness, they have completely, literally turned these buildings inside out, I have to say. They have raised the ceilings on the inside of the home. They have um, removed walls, made it these very large, great room, and oh my goodness, some of these sliding glass doors that literally remove the walls entirely, and you have the outdoor kitchen so you have the inside that has now become outside and the outside that has become inside. And it is truly an outdoor heaven in these properties. So don't discount what the front of the homes might look like. Now, in some of the non-HOA areas, you're gonna actually find where people have gone in and bought the older homes and completely demolished the homes and started from the ground up. And you may find some of the really unique farm style um, architecture that everyone is just absolutely loving with the white and the blacks. Um, it is really coming alive in the McCormick Ranch area. Now, if you go just a little bit further north, you're gonna actually now go into Ganey Ranch. Ganey Ranch is very luxurious. And that's where you're gonna start to start um, also see some of your very exclusive high-end shopping, like personal shoppers. Um, we have some fashion designers that live in the area. A lot of entertainers, a lot of um, aristocrats um, are in this area. So it's very prominent. You have views of the 
beautiful Camelback Mountain and the sunsets are absolutely gorgeous. You'll also start to see some larger lots in this area. Um, but again, these homes were originally built in the 70s and the 80s. And so you're going to see very unique styles as they've updated them and completely renovated them. Now we go just a little bit further north and we start to get to an area called DC Ranch. Now DC Ranch is also one of my absolute favorite areas and this is a great location with all the employment that's coming into the greater Phoenix area because this is where the 101 freeway just heads up north and then it turns a little bit to the west. This is right where DC Ranch is and I love these um, large one acre and two acre lots that are just kind of nestled at the base of the mountain and the views of the McDowell Mountains are insane when the sun goes down. And these are single level custom um, homes that are in the four to 5,000 square feet. Um, a, lot, a lot of them have like the toy garages or workshops where you might have the rails or the off-road um, vehicles, but it is very peaceful, very quiet on this side of town. Um, and this is where it range, prices range right around one to two million. And you can also still get yourself into a townhouse right around the six to $800,000 price point. Now, as we start to go a little bit further north, you actually become um, a little bit more of the desert. You're also going to be further away from freeway system. You're going to be further away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Now, the reason people buy up here is they like this exclusivity. So a lot of the people that are moving here from really higher end, like in Southern California or even Washington State, um, where for them, this is no problem on these price tags, um, but they like that um, exclusivity the um, guarded gates where it is manned 24 seven and it is of the top level security. Um, and these homes are just stunning as they start to go up into the mountains. Um, you're talking golf courses too, that are some of the best golf courses, which by the way, we have golf courses throughout the greater Phoenix area, over 200 golf courses. Now, that would be fun, except for, I don't play golf, just saying. <laughs> but let me tell you, I can pull you in any direction and you're gonna hit a golf, course, a golf course. If you get up into this area, again, where Greyhawk and Troon, this is where the exclusive high-end um, golfers, especially those that are on the circuit and they're traveling, this is where they like to stay. As you get even further north Scottsdale, this is where you are really getting to the 10, 15 million dollar um, price tags and you are one with nature in let's just say three to five acre lots. Um, a lot of permanent guards or security live on site at some of these um, premises. So as you can see, Scottsdale is truly the lap of luxury but it is also very desert focused. In fact, the city of Scottsdale has a lot of rebates and programs for homeowners that keep their um, property with low water maintenance. So you're gonna see fewer grass, fewer lawns, and you're gonna see fewer of the palm trees, and you're gonna see a lot more of what mother nature put there herself. Now, most of the people that are coming, and it doesn't matter really where you're coming from. If you're coming from the Northwest, if you're coming from California, if you're coming from Illinois or Minnesota or the Northeast, everyone is so used to seeing trees and grass and things like that. But in this part of, again, our greater Phoenix area in Scottsdale, that's not what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the preservation of what our, again, our um, natural beauty of our um, state is. If you're looking for some, uh, something a little bit more green, let me take you on a little tour of Phoenix. So being that we are way up north right now, right? We're talking about North Scottsdale. If we go just a little bit west where there is still nothing but desert, I am telling you in the next five to 10 years, 
it's not going to be desert. There is going to be more housing in this area than you could probably even imagine. In fact, many of this is already slotted um, for um, different developments and they're already being permitted as we speak. We have a ginormous employer that is going to be opening up their facility in just a couple of years here in the Northwest. Um, this is going to be the actually the largest semiconductor manufacturing facility in the entire western part of the United States. And we are so thrilled to have them move here to the greater Phoenix area. They actually just started um, doing some of the development for the property. They've landed um, a couple of buildings where they are um, set up in the meantime to get restructured and organized and they're going to be working on these fabs 36 billion dollar fabs um, over the next many years um, they are going to be in full operation to provide semiconductor chips to um gosh let's see qualcomm um iphone um god i can't even remember all the different companies but they are going to be even doing things for our government, they're going to be doing um, it like it, it is just the beginning of Greater Phoenix. I cannot even tell you. I started to receive some phone calls to get some housing in this northwest part of the town. It's still dirt. It is so far out, but it is in the planning stages. So let me further, like I said, let's talk about what's happening in Phoenix and the housing. So at the furthest north right now, we have Desert Ridge. Well, you'd have Northern, North Phoenix, and then you also have Desert Ridge. Desert Ridge is already like moving and going and events and shopping and dining and golfing and resorts. Like it's already in full motion. So again, my recommendation is Get yourself into the greater Phoenix area now before all this other new building is going on, maybe in not your forever home, but where you're gonna start. And then once you get here, you can start to really get to know all these new areas that are gonna be growing in the greater Phoenix area. So Desert Ridge is one of my highly recommended areas, especially for um, young professionals that are looking for something really vibrant, but quality and not, not as fast moving as Old Town. Like they don't want that kind of a scene. They want something more data bill, datability, how's that? Okay, this is the, uh, in my opinion, the highest rated datable part of the greater Phoenix area. I really, really do. And everyone that I've put in this area tells me how much they love this part of town. So Desert Ridge is the first area that I wanna talk about. Now, the next part, if we come down just a little bit south, we're going to be going through some more mountains, which, by the way, if you are an outdoor enthusiast, you are going to love the greater Phoenix area. I don't care where you live. You are going to be within 15, 20 minutes of a trailhead, and you are going to have um, mountain views either by climbing up the mountain and you get to see the beautiful skyline or you're going to be in an area where you can see those stunning sunsets either because the sun's on the mountain or the sun is going down behind the mountain. I'm telling you, I can tell you which trails to go on when you come to visit because they are plentiful here in the greater Phoenix area. So as you get down into the greater, into the downtown area, I'm actually going to point out two different parts of the greater of, of Phoenix. The first one is the Biltmore Fashion Square area. This is very high end. There is some beautiful, beautiful estates in this area. In fact, I've had several people that have been looking in Scottsdale for estates. And then when they find what the Biltmore area has, they decide to go over here in this area because most of these homes were built like around, oh, 19, well, there's, there's, it may have been built like in 1955, but they tore the house down and now it's built in 2020. Like there's a lot of that over there. There's also like two, three acre estates. Oh my gosh, with absolutely stunning, like 
vegetation, trees, lawns, grass, like, oh my God, it is stunning. Let me tell you, you're gonna, if you're just visiting even, you're gonna wanna check out the Biltmore Fashion Square because I love just driving around there myself. The housing is insane. So yes, it is on the high end, but you can just be just outside of the area and you're gonna find some beautiful homes, probably right, not probably, you're gonna find some beautiful homes that are in the affordable rating area. Now, when I say affordable, the greater Phoenix area, the median income is starting to climb, climb, climb. In fact, we have more people moving here with over an average of $150,000 a year annual income. And so when you have the double income, um, you're talking over $300,000. So when you have that type of um, an income base, um, purchasing a home in the greater Phoenix area for 4,000 square feet in the $1 million, $800,000 to $1 million price point, it's not difficult, especially with today's low interest rates, which kind of gets me to my most favorite part of Phoenix that I want to share with you. Are you ready? This is, I, I, I don't think there has been one single person that has gone to this part of town that has ever said, I don't like it. If you wanna see green and you wanna see trees and you wanna see something spectacular, you're gonna wanna go to Arcadia. Now Arcadia is right smack dab next to Scottsdale. Now, I do agree that if you are looking um, to purchase an Airbnb property and you need to advertise it or will be advertising it as a Scottsdale home, it does carry more weight in a weird way, but it carries more weight, I get it, um, as opposed to saying Arcadia, because if you don't live here in the greater Phoenix area, you have no idea what Arcadia is. So that's to your advantage if you're buying, because let me tell you, if you're looking for something green and you're looking for something a lot more sprawled out, something newer, something more modern, I'm telling you, you're going to fall in love with Arcadia. All right, so now I'm going to get to my local favorite mountain that I personally hike on two to three times a week. This mountain is called South Mountain. And what you want to do is find that little village, if you want to call it, it's not really little, but it's called Awatuki. How did I say that? I know, we have a lot of Indian names here too. Everybody always gets caught up on one of the streets called Gila and they call it Gila. Um, there's another one called um, Germain, but it's spelled as German. Anyways, don't worry. I got you when you come here. I'll make sure you're talking like a local and finding all the great spots too. But again, this is a spot people don't know about. Only if you work with a local expert are they going to tell you about Awatuki. Yeah, Awatuki. A-H-W-A-T-U-K-E-E. -E. I spell it wrong every time, just saying. So, Awatuki. Awatuki is the town, and it's not really an official town, it's just a part of Phoenix that nobody knows about. And it's on the south side of South Mountain. Now, there's obviously a north side of South Mountain too. Not the same, not the same. So don't get tricked by another realtor telling you, uh-uh, you can go over here too, you still get mountain views. It's not the same, it's not the same. So you're gonna wanna go on the south side. There's three zip codes, that's it. That's the only way you can find this part of town. And it's where all the athletes live and the entertainers. And let me tell you, I was at Target the other day and there's Cardinals players shopping around. It's kind of fun seeing them with their kids and their wife and the wife telling them what they have to do. <laughs> But this is the little area that I'm talking about. It is so amazing. And you have mountain views, hikes. There's over 51 trails. And I only know that because, again, I'm on that mountain all the time. I love this part of town. And it has one of the best school districts in all of the Phoenix area. Okay, so there is a lot of similarities in Scottsdale and Phoenix. And there's a lot of differences. So if you're looking to get more home for your money and you don't need that Scottsdale branding on your mailing return address, then there are some amazing places in the city of Phoenix and there's so many more to come. So the only way I can help you find those 
little hidden treasures is you got to pick up that phone, you got to give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. It is so awesome when I hear people's voices when I answer the phone. They're like, no way. Yes, I really answer the phone. So give us a call as soon as you think that you are considering moving or even coming for a visit because maybe you're scouting it out, but we'll, we'll get you set up in the right places so that you get the most out of your visit. All right, guys, it's Cheryl Willis over at the Real Agent Now Group, and I can't wait to help you. We're helping so many peoples and so many peoples. We are helping tons of peoples, and we want to make you one of our people as soon as possible. Thanks, guys. Cheryl Willis. And when you are ready to make that move, we are here for you. Take care. Make it a good one. Bye.